really close game and i think that like that happens a lot i guess where like these little spacings come up and like i just don't make the right decision um so yeah i would i would like to focus on some of the neutral stuff there i guess because it kind of has me on yoshi's too as a result of that um but especially when the platforms are weird i was just wondering like what the strategy would be for those spots so yeah okay i mean i will say like beforehand fountain is like one of the harder stages mm. in my, my opinion just harder to laser obviously um yeah but i do think a lot of the good things that are good on yoshi's can also be kind of good on fountain like controlling top platform or like kind of treating top platform is like uh how do i put it but you know how you can call out people going to side platform when you're close it's like top platform can kind of be treated the same way where right. you treat it as like a place that they're trying to go and you can read it more often and it doesn't always have to be like full hop shine or whatever like even just like double jumping above them and landing on top of them on the top platform is good okay. um getting like space back airs even like down air edge cancel like get some damage and like you put like fox in weird frame disadvantage you mm -hmm. know where he's not like comfortable wave landing or dash dancing or whatever sure um as far as the corner the corner does suck but as long as you're outside of the range of runoff aerial then here let me share my screen what's that can you see yep i can see it now yeah yeah so like as long as you're outside of the range it's kind of like i don't know how you feel about the falcon matchup but like versus falcon when you uh stay in the corner it's not that bad because falcons do this strategy too where they take top platform mm -hmm. and as long as you're outside of that runoff aerial range then like you're pretty safe and you can react to the short hop off or the jump off whichever jump it is okay now how you react to that is like going to be up to you and it depends on what movement you're doing beforehand but like if you're standing still like you can obviously i'll tilt it if you're dash dancing depending on which dash you're doing like you can dash through to center um you can shield you can even roll the center like maybe i'm wondering if when we watch this if like your game plan versus top platform is more aligned like more along the lines of like trying to beat it, Fox or trying to counter Fox when like it should be or could be to like avoid or reposition okay. or take center, you know? Okay. Even doing yeah. stuff like instant double jump, like a well timed instant double jump in the corner. Um, trying to, if you're trying to like counter his attack or something, could be good. Mm -hmm. okay. But yeah, let's see. Yeah, so like I, I feel like this is super common when foxes like do this this always feels like a bluff when they land here or when they like full hop here yeah where like a lot of times especially on these two stages like i say yoshi's and uh fallon i tend to call this out a lot here with full hop shine just because i don't buy the fact that they're just gonna full hop and empty land right here yeah but also it's like even if they do and we cross each other up, I'm okay with this position, me being here and Fox being here. Okay. Yeah, because from here you have, like, a lot of things to do, right? Like, I think when you're on top platform, a common thing that Foxes like to do is they just start fucking shooting up airs at you, you know? Yeah, that's why I get scared of that position is because of that happening to me and then, like, clipping me with one of them. Mm -hmm. Um, But... I don't know, do you, do you find that, like, you're just not as worried about them going for those, like, full hop up airs? Well, it's not, it's, that, it's not that I'm not worried about it, it's that I still, I just have a plan for it. Okay. Like, I think shore hopping is a huge counter to that. We can actually look at that right quick, because I, I kind of just want to show you. I don't know if you've ever, like, checked it out. No, I've never, like, short hopped on purpose to dodge it, really. Like, I've seen people do it on side plat, but I've never thought about that on top plat. That makes even more sense. Mm hmm So, like, 
but we'll, we'll just play out the whole like situation kind of mm -hmm. um, so fox is doing this right and like i said a lot of times they are kind of faking and they do that shit. so like i really like just going up there but mm -hmm. again if they are going to do this, this is the position we get now, right? Yeah. And now Fox is going to do something like freaky like that, right? But you can sure hop like above, like over the um mm -hmm. the up air. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And then you try to like. Usually the way you would punish that is to try to like fall on top of them when there's mm -hmm. a lag and down here. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that that's just one way. Like you can always just like run off. Um you can always like full hop. Like you have more like flexibility here than you think. Right. Yeah, now that I see that you're definitely right. Because like Fox doesn't know what's about to happen here. What do you like? You don't even know what's about to happen. You from here, you <laughs> can land know. on top platform. You can land on the side platform. You can land on the ground. You know, mm. like yeah. You don't have to give it to them for for free here for sure. Okay. Let's and I guess if, if I'm doing the short hop stuff there, it's like they don't really. It'd be like for them to call that out. I guess like when you play players, like do they call out you doing that short hop in aggressive ways usually, or is it like not even worth it for them to contest that? I think the way they would call this out is they would um they would wait a little bit. Okay. Like that. Mm -hmm. So like it has happened before. But again, like, that's what I mean by, like, you can always full hop. You can always do something like that, like, you know. Like, right, this is always yeah. good. This is something that uh, Ginger likes to do a lot. Is kick a direction, the opposite direction of Fox, and short hop off this hop platform to laser. Mm -hmm. And then okay. it's like you can get an easy drop through laser after that. Okay. But, yeah, yeah, that's that's really good stuff, then. Yeah, yeah. But like controlling that top platform, calling out the top platform and playing your mix-ups once you're there is pretty important. Yeah, um, I, that's like a part of the matchup I never ever do, so I'll have to start doing that at that point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I just, I just saw it like immediately when they did this and you got a really good dash chance. I'm like, man, you might as well, like, sometimes risk this because it's not, like, a direct counter. It's like, you get to play a mix-up where if you're right, you hit him, and if you're wrong, then you have to play another mix-up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was I was thinking, too, I guess, is, like, is it, like, like, do you feel like, in general, it's pretty worth it to, like, go for those kind of reads just because, yeah. like, a lot of the times I back myself up because I don't do something like that like i don't aggressively interact with full hop a lot and then i feel like i'm in like maybe i'm imagining it as a worse position than it is but like i always feel like when i'm in the corner it's like a pretty bad position i usually got there by backing up because i was lasering uh -huh. um and i feel like that happens to me like a lot in this matchup is like i'm just playing out of the corner over and over again because of that like well i'm scared of going for those big risks but maybe it just makes more sense to do that well like i said it is more common on the this stage in Yoshi's, just because of how tight the center is. Mm -hmm. um, maybe on Dreamland, this would be a lot harder to aim, because like the center is really wide. Okay. You know, but like here, it's like this is all we have to work with, right? Just like this area for Fox when he full hops. You get what I mean? Yeah. No, I do. Now you say that. Yeah. And. Okay. Also, it's just, like, at low percent, I guess the, the way I view it is, like, what else are you, like, waiting for, right? If this if this mix-up is being presented and it's pretty good, like, risk-reward, like, are you looking for something better than this, or? No, I guess you're, I guess you're right, yeah. Yeah. 
So it's like, you know, it, it might not hit. Like, this Fox could have done a drill again. Like, it could have done a drill, Nair, Anthony Land. You know, Shine could have completely whiffed. And it's like, you know, that's okay. The other thing you can do is, like, if you don't, like, if they don't have the tendency to, like, take that top platform a lot, then, um, like, yeah, you can stay on the ground. And I like what you did. I do think if you thought he was going to stay on the ground, though, then maybe you would have pressed here. Hmm. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, yeah. Like something that uh, like Mango does a lot is the way he whip punishes like full hop landings. Is he dashes away, and then wave dashes in at the timing that they're gonna land to like get like a shine or whatever. But he he's basing it all around like looking for a shine, looking for a shine. Yeah, you know, like a, a safer shine. Like Fox full hopping here is like that's good for you this is fox saying like i don't want to deal with this laser that's great All right because mm -hmm. now that means we don't have to deal with running power shift shine short hop nair short hop drill up smash like that we'll take that you know yeah no okay that makes yeah. sense yeah um that's a little spooky yeah i think I think I wasn't ready for him to have shielded it, and then I, like, just... I guess I didn't really do the right thing. Uh oh It looked like you were ready for him to shield it, because you did, like, shine laser. I guess the shine laser... Yeah. I, I just don't know, don't know I, if the shield pressure was that great. Yeah. I understand I, this. I definitely... I think I just meant to roll. I definitely, that happens to me a ton where I just try to spam roll in these spots where I get scared when Fox, like, is full hopping really close to me. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm more so thinking about, like, the risk reward of running shine because it's funny, like, that you want to do Fox Falco because I was just kind of thinking of Fox Falco. And I do this running shine sometimes, but I feel like the range you did it at, it only beats, um... It only beats like full dash forward. Okay. Which can be fine, but the issue is it loses to full hop and it loses to him dash dancing. Yeah, that right. that makes sense. I've been doing this running shine like in this position a lot lately, just because like I was thinking like kind of the same thing I said before, which is like if you it feels like if Fox if I were to back up, I'd be in such a bad position. It's like I feel like okay, I should go for something that would hit fox for running at me mm -hmm. um which is what i was like scared of yeah but yeah. i guess the risk reward on that is not amazing if they have all this stage yeah but i just i just feel so stuck in this spot on that stage because the platform's in that like little half spot so i was like oh, i don't really know what else i should do other than hit him for like running at me at a timing i think well i wonder if um you should be more like intentional with what they're running at you with because because okay. here you're trying to just read him running at you from so far away and this could have been a drill it could have been a there it could have been an up smash and it could have been a full hop it could have been a shield it's like that's a that's a lot that it could have been you know mm -hmm. as to where if it were closer like a lot closer than you did this running shine it can't be that much that many things because the running shine is going to beat the startup of the jump the startup of the aerial, the startup of the up smash. Right. You know, but it still might lose it at dash back, but that's fine. But like, in this one, it's like, there's so many variables because of how far you are that like, I think your game plan shouldn't be to actually hit him immediately right now. Like, I don't okay. think this is the range where you need to hit Fox. And yeah. I think it's a Falco thing. I experience this a lot when I'm playing Falco, but I feel like I am on a timer where, like, time has passed and I feel like I need to make a decision before Fox comes and hit me. But it's like, well, what is he going to hit me with? Because I, I play Fox from this... I, I play Fox versus Falco, like, a lot. And there's not great things to hit Falco with right here that Falco can't deal with. Running Shine is okay. really risky. It loses to, like, downers in place. 
running up smash from this far away just straight up loses to like Falco dash dancing or Falco jumping or Falco shielding or Falco doing a downer at me, right? Mm-hmm. So like to make anything happen, Fox has to like cross this line. It feels like. Yeah. And that's, like, pretty risky because you have a lot of tools to stop him from even, like, crossing this line. Right, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense to that way. So it's just, like, so, you gotta be aware of, like, what the fox is also, like, kind of risking. Okay. The fox did this full hop, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. He probably didn't want to, like, cross that line. Because it's risky. Yeah. And then I just committed with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. like... Again, I don't want you to kind of always have to like think of counters of what to do to stop Fox from running in or whatever. Because again, sometimes this could be as simple as just like, oh, if you think he's going to like run in across the line, but you don't really know with what, you're not close enough to really do anything, you can full hop. You can full hop from here to here. Right? Okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And then you can drop through laser and see what happens. It's like you. You don't have to hit him right now, and you don't have to like counter him right now. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, that makes sense. I think I just get so like because I, I I wasn't able to get like short hop laser out, so I so like yeah I felt like I had to do something. But you're definitely right. Once I reacted to the spacing, especially which I don't think I did very well. Yeah, and it's like you do have to play without your laser a lot in this matchup. It's not even uh, honestly. This isn't even a stage thing. You just have to play without your laser a lot versus Fox. Because if he can enter run, then your laser just loses value. Mm -hmm. This could have been FD. And I still would feel the same. Right? Given, yeah. like, you're already in the corner. You can't do a dashback laser. You could do, like, a dashback backup laser if this were FD. But, like, Fox can enter his run. You know? He can enter yeah. his run. That means he can get running power shield. And he can get running, like, full hop over the laser. Like, both of those are two, like, of the biggest, like, counter. They're probably the, the best counters to laser. It's running mm -hmm. power shield and running full hop over it. You yeah. Know? Yep. Yeah. That makes sense. So I guess from, from this position, it's like, I just want to be thinking about how it's pretty hard for him to hit me and just try to do some of the things that make it hard for him to actually get a hit on me. Like, mm -hmm. between, like, moving and shielding and stuff. Yeah. Because I'm, I guess I'm not as sure. I guess I do have to just reposition vertically to try to get like a good position out of this, on this stage. Yeah, like repositioning is always good. I feel like. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I, I have a hard time asking like a direct question about it because it feels like such a like difficult spot to me mentally in this spot where I can't shoot the laser and I have to like pick an option like that. Mm -hmm. um, Even like full but, hopping right here, like using this space is really good in all the stages, like this little gap between the platforms, because that means you can full hop here and you have this space to land with aerials and lasers with okay. that, like, like bypassing the platform without touching the platform. So like this little space, I think is pretty effective for Falco. Mm hmm right here and it's like especially if you're reading like him jumping like yeah you did full hop here you're jumping over him right right really, yeah now you're landing on him and it's like who knows if he still drills but the point is like you got above him and i think that's like pretty good yeah being above him means you can land on top of him it means you can land with laser um i think fiction said it before but like the whole matchup is people is like both of these characters just trying to get on top of each other and it's pretty true. Like, yeah. look who's on top of you right now. Yeah, that make that definitely makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, you get put in a weird scramble. It's fine. Ugh. Yeah, you're just yeah. nervous or scared. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, relatable. <laughs> definitely relatable. But uh, I always tell people that mistakes are reaction points too. Like, just because you air dodge doesn't mean you stop looking. Yeah, I guess I could have just seen this, and it's like, okay, definitely don't roll here. Like, even if I dash back once or stay mm -hmm. in place, I guess that would have been fun. Yeah. But it's like, okay. you want to change your position, you want to get out of it because you messed up and because you're in, like, you know, you just got hit a bunch and all those things, but it's just, 
Those are just feelings. Yeah. If we were to just look at this for what it is, then, like, you're in a fine spot. Mm -hmm. You can't laser or anything, but it's like, you know, the game isn't just, like, who can win the RPS. The game is, like, a lot of deception and repositioning and things like that. So, like, yeah. you could stay back here. You could wave Ash back into the corner and, like, yeah. get you work with this little space and use this to laser, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I think that's, like, a problem I have overall is, like, I will always think about it in terms of, like, the RPS of a position, and it's, like, mm -hmm. I'm not really good at, like, being in the corner for a while, I guess. Yeah. Like, using my movement and stuff to get out. Like, I usually just pick an option right away or something. Yeah. Or just laser right away, and just either they hit me first or they don't. Yeah, no, no, no. That's, uh... <laughs> that's a lot of Fox player mentality. Yeah. It, it's, like, the same thought process behind Fox players just running at you and ripping an up smash when, like, it only beats Falco jumping forward with a laser. Mm -hmm. They're just like, well... I'm accepting whatever else happens because the situation is so tense that I don't want to play it out. Yeah, I, I guess that is what's happening. Yeah, it's like I want it to be over, so I'm going to choose the option that does really well. And if I win, great. And if I lose, okay, I lost. Yeah. But that's like giving up. Yeah, definitely is. Yeah. I mean, I say it because I do it a lot too. And it, it hurts when I do that. <laughs> yeah, I always feel so dumb after, but I gotta just really think about my mix-ups or, like, what I should do in those positions. Mm -hmm. That sucks. I think the future here, honestly, is always gonna be near JC Shine. Oh, just assume something like that happened? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I... I I hate this spot where it's like you get like a clean opening and then like nothing connects and you're still trying to make it connect and Fox is just like spamming his panic options, which are all really good. If Fox had stayed on the ground and kept shining, if Fox, if Fox stayed on the ground and kept up tilting or up smashing or full hopping, whatever panic option he's pressing is just really good. Yeah. So like, me personally, I hate losing to like the panic options. That happens to me all the time, too, I feel like, where I get a hit, and, like, either because of Fox's animation after being hit, or, some, or like, something I don't recognize, like, I'm yeah. barely off with the shine, and then it doesn't connect, and... Yeah. But I guess yeah, JC Shining would be really helpful for that. JC Shine, grab, up smash, turn around up to, you know, like, mm -hmm. a lot of things. But I, I get the simplicity of, like, wanting to just, like, near shine. Yeah. So you were in the mix. I wonder yeah, how I was... you ran away. Yeah. Like maybe if you were Fox. But I, yeah. I just had a, a lesson with a Falco earlier. And I was like, when you're in it, when someone is close to you and you're Falco, you don't have time to run away. You don't have time to pull your gun out. It's time to like defend or fight. It feels like those are your two options. Mm -hmm. Defending can also mean repositioning. You could have rolled away, I guess. You could have instant double jump, maybe. Defending also means like defending yourself with like back air, up tilt, something like that. This is a great up tilt spot, great back air spot. Um, but from fighting Falco a lot, these are the spots where I'm trying to hit Falco. It's when we're close. Mm -hmm. Like. That, that's where I'm trying to apply my mix. I'm either going to, like, hit you early, I'm going to delay a little bit, I'm going to try and bait you, but, like, my intention is to, like, I'm trying to hit you if we're close. I'm not trying to reposition. Like, yeah. I'm the faster character, my moves are faster, my moves are bigger, uh, in most cases, not foxes, but, like, you know, Marth, Sheik, Ice Climbers, whoever, when they're close, um, a lot of times that they're just going to be trying to hit Falco. Because, like, if they don't, Falco's going to put some distance between you guys, and he's going to start getting his lasers out, or start getting his full hops out, and everything like that. So, yeah. just kind of accepting that is, like, I think pretty huge for Falco. Just accepting that, like, look, alright, well, I can't get away. I'm in the mix. I don't want to be in the mix, but here I am. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, because that actually 
that does ha now that I think about it, like that happens to me a lot. And usually in the moment, I end up thinking like, oh, I almost got away, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I was never going to in most times. Like for Sheik specifically, I feel like that happens to me a lot. Where, yeah. like, I recognize the situation and I try to back up, but, like, I just get hit anyway. Yeah, you're just in it. And it's like, Falco is, he's still a top tier. Like, just because he's in the mix doesn't mean he's bad at it. He has answers to every single thing in the, in the mix up. Right? Okay. Yeah. You have your up to, you have your back here, you have your up smash, you have your approaching, you have good approaches, you have, like, approaching Zayshi Shine. You have dash back shield, you have shield, you have CC. Mm -hmm. Like, you got everything you could possibly need that not a lot of characters always have. So, right. just because you're in the mix doesn't mean it's bad. It's just like, you don't, the thing is, you don't want to be here the whole game. Like, every interaction, you don't want to have to be in the mix where you have to do something. Right? You, you much rather, like, trick your opponent or get them to give you something for free, like baiting them with movement or whatever, or locking them down with lasers. Like that's more of what you want. But just cause you're here, it's like, yeah, you can still play this out. Yeah, you're right, definitely. I always am just trying to re, I realize like I'm always just trying to set up for the laser situations I'm comfortable with. And that's mm -hmm. kind of like most of the game I play in general is just trying to do those. Yeah. But I definitely can just play these spots. I just I felt like I shouldn't, but now that you say it like that, like I definitely should just go for something. I think when you understand that like people can read intentions and not just options, like you'll understand it a bit more. Because mm -hmm. like your intention of wanting to reset here can be read with a, like a number of things. They don't have to read the laser, they can just read like your body language or again your intention of wanting to reset mm -hmm. and overshoot. And that's, like, not that difficult to read because it's just like, oh, I'm not even thinking of an option. I just know that he's trying to move away, right? You're actually making it a lot easier on your opponent. Yeah. When when they get to just read your intention rather than, like, a specific option. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense, definitely. Because that, that happens to me a ton, so. Yeah. Oh. I haven't, well, okay, two things. One, invincibility, especially as Falco, <clears throat> you only get, you get two guesses. And if you're wrong on the second guess, you're in the mix immediately. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. um, you can use invincibility to take your one guess and always prioritize position after, and you'll probably always, you'll end up in a good spot almost every single time. But... I struggled a lot with this switching from Fox to Falco, where I took my two guesses as Falco, and then I was in a bad spot after. And that didn't happen to me as Fox that often. I was able to, like, take two guesses a lot of times and still be in somewhat of a good spot, because I can just, like, run away to a good spot or whatever. Okay. Yeah. That, that's actually a good point, because that's definitely what happens here. <laughs> yeah. Like I just go for the second one, and then I'm in the corner in a horrible spot. I think invincibility is, like, it's a trap. In a lot of ways i don't know if you've ever like gambled at the casino or yeah. whatever but invincibility kind of feels like the the side bets where it's just like it's a fool's bet to keep taking yeah. this bet over and over and over again a lot of people fall for it so like you try and hit them here and you try and hit them here and now you're in the mix yeah you can lose your stock right now yeah definitely she'll drop back air double shine bam like mm -hmm. Even if even if nothing happens, you still have to like out look at you. You have to shield. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's like, what just happened? Like, you just had invincibility. How how did you end up here? Yeah, now I'm in the worst spot. Right. So it's like, look at it this way. Take your guess. You're wrong. You have center. You're invincible. What more do you want? Yeah, and I'm in a pretty good spot. Yeah. Yeah. The oh, other yeah. thing about this with aerials. Um, I just checked this before I started doing this lesson, and it's just a theory, but my theory on Falco doing short hop aerials is they should, not should, how do I put this? Like, you want to do aerials that cover at least two things, meaning it should cover a jump or a dash forward, mm -hmm. or it should cover a dash back or a jump, right? 
but like the aerials that lose to both dash back and jump feel like they are not worth it. Okay. And it, again, it's because Falco is slow, and after he whiffs these things, it's really bad. And like some aerials lose to jump, lose to dash back, and lose to shield, right? So that's like three things the aerial loses to, and it only beats them moving forward. So the arrows you do that only beat them moving forward, you want to pull back a little bit more, right? So there's, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But, like, if you look at some of the better Falcos, like Mango or whatever, when he does a lot of arrows, um, they are beating two things at least. A dash back, a jump, usually is from an approaching laser into an aerial, because approaching laser gives you momentum or whatever, and then it catches the jump. All those things, but it's beating multiple options. Mm -hmm. So that I, makes sense. Yeah. yeah, that's my thought on this area right here. Yeah, regardless of a the invincibility. A ton of my down airs too are just ones that like beat them for dashing in. Like that's usually the way I down air, mm -hmm. and I never really thought about that. Yeah, so a lot of them probably could go or at least be safer. Like at least be like more undershot. Yeah, when I when I think about it, from playing it from Fox's point of view. The easiest Falcos I fight are the ones that do aerials. Like, just approaching aerials. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm like, I'm already locked in on my game plan when that's the thing that Falcos are showing me when I'm Fox Falco. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, wow, this is great. I, I can full hop, I can dash back, and either, no matter what, nothing bad will happen if I do both of these. Yeah, I always I feel like I Yeah. Yeah. It always feels like a bad option after I pick it, but I just always end up doing it because I'm, like, just worried about Fox running into me all the time. I think yeah. I'm, like, neurotically worried about Fox running into me yeah. often. But... Yeah, that's fair. But I think if we really, really understand, like, our counters to Fox running at us, it makes it a lot, lot less scarier. Mm -hmm. Like, even, even Fox entering his run is, like, a huge commitment for him. Because now, now he can't, like, delay. Like, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, right. So, like, Fox can run at us. I, I guarantee you if Fox ran, only ran at Falco and never, like, dash dance, like, Falco with 100-0 Fox. Because he has <laughs> everything possible to deal with Fox running forward. Mm -hmm. Right? The issue is, is that, like, Fox has, like, that dash dance to make it ambiguous and all those things. But, like, if it was just him running forward, like, we can deal with that. Yep. Okay, this is nice. Uh-oh. Hey, I see you lost the shield. Yeah. Yep. All right. And, I don't know, you really gotta kind of ask yourself when you do analysis and stuff like this, are these the spots you want to hit Fox? Like him coming fresh off the ledge? Yeah, I hate to say it, but I really think I was probably trying to execution test the ledge dash. That's fine. I've been there. Yeah. I it's one of those it's... things where it's from bracket, and I'm like, oh, maybe I could. But yeah. I really, I really, really should not do that, because I lose so often for doing it. Yeah. It's like, Fox on a ledge, it, it's just a thing that you just have to accept, it feels like, if you want to win that interaction yep. more. It's not about, like, solving an interaction. You just want to have, like, a higher percentage of, like, not losing that interaction immediately. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to execution test, like, people on a ledge, and I tell this to Fox players that do it to Falco all the time, it's just like, okay, well, you're going to lose it a percentage of the time. That's just how it's going to work. Yep. You know, if they hit their Texio and do all these things, then, like, you're going to have, like, a low success rate in this interaction specifically. And that's yeah. up to you to decide. I personally don't think it's worth. I think you can take center, let Fox come off the ledge, and we play from there. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, I mean, you're definitely just right, I think, as well, too. I think I just kind of, like, crumble under the moment sometimes, and I just go for these kind of, like, cheesy things like that. Yeah. I think that's just, like, a weakness in my play, realistically, but yeah. I definitely have to get myself to not do that. Just I'm not let myself do it in friendlies, either. Yeah, I think that's probably where it starts is having the discipline not to even do it in friendlies, even when you're like winning, even when you have a skill advantage or whatever. Yeah. 
like building that discipline in friendlies is definitely probably where it starts because if you don't then what you do in friendlies and what is like if friendly we're counting friendlies as our real practice that is what we're going to do like when it's time in tournament or when we get nervous yeah no i think that's true that's definitely true yeah i tell myself every day like damn i need to stop fucking with fox on the ledge and as, I even stopped, like, kind of lasering Fox on a ledge, because, like, all this is doing is, like, it's very easy to, like, ledge dash power shield laser. So if this Fox ledge dash right here, and you shot this laser, you're just kind of giving them a free power shield. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so even this laser is kind of like an execution test. Oh, that's Not crazy, though. Cause... No, sorry, go on. Wait, no, no, no. I was just saying, it's like, it's not as egregious of an execution test, but it is, like, it can be one. If you're going to do this laser, you can do it, like, you can trick them. Like, shoot a high laser. That's not mm -hmm. even going to hit their shield, you know? Make them, like, right. pay attention. So, if you're not playing it with lasering them, like, that would, like, be a laser they have to deal with right after the ledge dash in mind. Mm -hmm. Like, where, where, where are you trying to play from there, I guess? Because then what I'm worried about is, like, by the time I've reacted to the ledge dash, like they might, we might be on like equal footing frame wise, and Fox might just be close enough to me that like now I'm like kind of in danger, I guess, like more than like I'm more vulnerable to him just attacking me if he gets yeah. like a full ledge dash off. Is yeah. that just like reality, I guess, or is it like just reality? I, gotta... I think yeah, Fox okay. is just that he's that good that he can ledge dash and have invulnerability and be able to like be on equal footing with you. Okay, but, so... Oh, sorry. Well, I was going to say, the good news is there is timing. There's, like, a visual cue when he ledge dashes. So it's not like he can, he can just dash off the ledge. He has to finish, like, the wave land or whatever, the wave dash. Mm -hmm. And i much rather have Fox in the timing where I can see him before he plays his mix-up rather, rather than, like, it just being ambiguous and him being near me. Okay. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. So, like, Fox in the corner off ledge, or, like, right here, it's just, like, it's it's going to be no different from, like, neutral. And it's, like, yeah, neutral is already vulnerable. All of it is. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, true. Okay. So it's just, like, I think I have my own personal opinions on the ledge, but I think for your sake and everyone's sake, when they're playing, um, don't treat the ledge as like it's an advantage. I think that's also a trap. Okay, I definitely do. So that's I think yeah. you're right though. Not you say that. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think it's like it's it's kind of been talked about in the community where like the ledge is supposed to be bad and the ledge is supposed to be this, but it's just like well, yeah. If our game got patched, then yes, then the ledge would quote unquote supposed to be bad, but we don't know that. Mm -hmm. The reality of it is the ledge is good for a lot of characters, especially Fox. So, like, why are we even listening to, like, the belief that the ledge is supposed to be a bad place when we're already 20 years into the game and almost every character, almost every player can execute this technique that yeah. immediately destroys that belief? Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's true. I think I'm just hoping it's not true, but it is. So. It is true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, that's why I, I kind of related to, like, um, like the side bets at casinos. It's like, people do that be because of hope. <laughs> like, they yeah. literally place those bets because of hope. <laughs> yeah. And You're in right. reality, the bets are not good. But it's like, <laughs> they don't want to look at reality. They're just like, yeah, I just hope it hits. Like, what if? That's so much of what I do in this game, actually. That's oh, yeah. so funny you put yeah. it that way. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people yeah. do it. I'm there, too. I do it. <laughs> but you get kind of lucky, so whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and that's what happens at the casino, too. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, true. Sometimes you do get lucky. <laughs> this tournament was at a casino, so I know. That's funny. Okay. This is fine. Let's see. Yeah, you're in a safe place. I guess the only thing 
is when you do this laser, is be ready to like jump shine this. Mango just told me this yesterday. Like when you get these close lasers, you're the first thing you're looking for is to jump shine. I think that's the priority. Okay. Cause that's a freebie. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's my I think only I wasn't... gripe with that. What's up? I think I just wasn't sure at the range, and maybe I'm just like reacting too early to the situation, but like I know I grab here often because I'm like I don't know if Fox is going to have been able to, like, land and shield or not. Because it mm -hmm. feels like... And this might just be me lumping two different situations that are different as the same in my head. But, like, a lot of the times I'll laser Fox close range. It feels like sometimes I laser them and I get the shine. And sometimes they're able to land and shield. And I'm not sure if I would have actually been able to react to the state they were in if I could shine or not. Or yeah. if, like, it's kind of a read on what's going to happen. I don't, I don't think you need to be able to react always. I think it's just, like... It should be in the back of your mind, like, or be trained at least to be like, we're close by. It's likely that I can land this laser when they're close by. And okay. maybe you don't have to, like, always react perfectly, but, like, that shine should be in your, like, your toolkit when you do a laser this close. That's all I mean. I'm not saying, like, shine this every single time. Right, okay. Because, yeah. like, the fox could have stayed grounded. You know, yeah. and then the laser grab could have been just as fine, but it's just like this is just like some advice saying like, yeah, look for these shines a bit more in these close laser spots. So when you're in these spots, and this this is probably something I could just figure out myself, I guess, but like, I don't know if I do it right. Um, when you're in these spots and like, uh, you're not sure if Fox is gonna end up being in the air or grounded, mm -hmm. are you actually able to react if he started his short hop and is gonna be in the air? Or like it you depends. Just make a guess, I guess. It depends. Okay, like here, like this time, do you feel this was a reactable thing that I should have been able to do or Maybe. But it's like you don't know if he's gonna dash in short hop. You don't know if he's gonna backflip in short hop. Because if he backflip yeah. in short hop, you know, he'd be in the air by now already. And then we might be able to react to it. I don't okay. know. He could have backflip full hopped into the laser and he could have been up here by now and got hit by a laser. So it's oh, like true. You know, some of them are easier than others. Some of them, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why I'm okay. saying just, like, kind of look for it. Or yeah. It, it's something to be aware of when you are taking the risks to shoot a laser this close. That's all I mean. Okay. Gotcha. Because of the risk of shooting this laser is, like, you know, if he gets a close power shield, he's on top of you. That's pretty bad. Yeah. You know? If he had just ran past you and did a running shine, he might have hit you. So it's, like... This laser is risky. That's all I mean. It's like if you're gonna take the risk to shoot this risk of a laser, then you know, look for like the payoff from doing mm -hmm. it. That's what I mean. Yeah, that makes sense, definitely. Yeah. I tried to get too specific with it for sure. Mm-hmm. I was thinking that. Oh. Even there. Yeah. That should have been a jump shot opportunity, you think? I think so. Yeah. And I, I see it now these days. Yeah. Oh, or like some type of pressure yeah. like jump shine dash dance bait up the spot dodge short hop in place dealing with the spot dodge short hop in place is pretty good because it deals with the spot dodge it deals with them spamming shine and it's really really good versus them holding shield so like yeah this is a spot where like yeah i could see this laser and then bam short hop in place right now yeah you know, that could be big. The so, Nair, the Nair wasn't bad. Because the Nair beat, like, movement. The, the Nair was, but I think with what I was thinking, the Nair was bad. Because what I, what I realized today, I guess, when I was watching some of my Fox games, is like, um, I, I, like, Fox actually has more opportunity to, like, get out of stuff after being lasered, even at really close range. Oh, so, yeah. like, I kind of hit these lasers, and then I just assume, like, okay, I got the neutral win because I lasered Fox for being close to me. Nope. But, like, Fox does just have another option after that. And that was kind of... I wasn't really sure, like, how I should deal with that, too, once I hit a laser at this close range. And it's like, okay, well, Fox still does have mix-ups. Um, but now that you say between, like, dash dance and stuff, that makes more sense. Yeah. Okay. Well, you gotta be careful. There's also a spot... I guess you did shield, so you were like kind of limited, but I think you shielded a bit too early and mm -hmm. kind of cut off your mix-ups. 
Yeah, I think I just freaked out after I dared because I. Yeah, because this again, this is that that spot. Fox is over here. You're up here, and you have like this path to like. Yep. You know, do that short hop laser. And then short hop laser is pretty good too because like if you short hop laser here, turn it around, it cuts off like Fox doing his full hop, like approach right. here. Right. I mean, guess this, this is fine. Uh oh. This just felt dangerous. Yeah, that definitely was. Yeah. And I get it because you don't want to be like directly under Fox. But like, this is fine. He didn't drop through. Like, you're still safe here. Mm -hmm. Right? He can't run off and hit you. He can short hop off and hit you, but like, you know, let's say you just like turn your back right here and you're ready for that. Then you kind of negate that and it's like if he drops through, if he drops through, he drops through and it's just like then you're in this position. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. And that's what would have happened. But this, if this felt too open. Like, yeah. this, this felt like you can get hit by like him just randomly like shield dropping the airing. Mm -hmm. You know? This also might get hit by him actually doing runoff aerial. I think it does. Like if he just ran to the left and did runoff like an air back air drill or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. When I saw this it just it just looked like a lot of things beat it. And even like the landing also didn't look like a good position to be in right after yeah definitely not yeah oh that sucks okay I did this combo too and I'm like I'm kind of curious I need to see, I want to see what uh this person's DI was because a lot of foxes do really good DI on this back air and it makes me question if the, the back air is even worth it. I think the back air is worth it like when they're more towards the edge. Mm -hmm. But like, let's see what he do. He's sort of just holding up, up and away. Okay. Yeah, up and away is like, this close to stage, it doesn't feel great. Falco's sick because like, it wasn't bad, and you still got him off stage. It's just, I'm yeah, wondering it, if, like, I think you should have done, like, another little dash dance or something and done a short hop aerial to hit him lower. That makes sense, definitely. I watched that, that video that you did about the, the comboing fox mm -hmm. for, like, getting him lower stuff, so yeah. it definitely put him in that spot that I don't want. Yeah. Because yeah. I kind of got lucky, realistically, that this edge guard worked out. Yeah, yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. Uh oh. This is kind of... Like, I like that you did this down air and took top platform. Mm -hmm. I guess I don't like that you panicked on the top platform. I don't know if it was Yeah, I'm mistake. so not comfortable up there. It's definitely just... Like, I, the stuff you said in the beginning of this about, like, short hopping up there, I, would like, never thought about, so I just usually freak out up there. Mm-hmm. That, that makes sense. So. But, I don't know, you get good percent. Uh, I didn't like the down air. Like, this is great. I don't like that just because of the percent. Yeah. That's the only thing. No, that was horrible. Yeah. yeah. But, like, yeah, this is fine. You can just run off laser. Yeah, I always I always end up, like, kind of just jumping off and aerialing on those side platforms often because when it's at that middle height, I'm, like, not super comfortable with what I should do because, like, I can't laser them from up there, obviously, because, like, it wouldn't hit them for being on the ground. So it's, like... I get worried about them being at the spot where it's like they could run under up smash me and obviously the down air was like not the move because they could just jump into it like what happened but mm -hmm. um i just i always feel pretty constrained when i'm there and i always feel like i have to make a decision quickly when i'm above them on those on the fountain side platforms like that yeah but remember like 
kind of what I was saying at the beginning. You also don't have to play immediately. Yeah, you're right. Right? Like, look at him. He got the fuck out of there. Because, like... Bro, yeah. He felt like he was in some friendly disadvantage. But, like, nothing's stopping you from, like, sitting there. You can just shore hop in place and do another back air if you think he's going to run at you. Mm -hmm. Or you you can, like, shore hop with the intention to think that he's going to, like, jump at you and, like, threaten, like, back air down or whatever. And if he dashes back, he dashes back. And it's like, well, that's fine. Like, you didn't have to hit him anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It it feels like some... At least when I play, it feels like there's, like, pseudo-invisible rules that, like, yeah, yo, you have to hit your opponent when these mix-ups are available. Like, you just have to. That's me. Like, that's how the game works. And I don't know where that crazy belief came from, but I, I'm here to tell you that is not fucking true. Yeah. Like, yeah. you don't. <laughs> yep. You actually just don't. You could have jumped to the top platform for all I cared. Like, I... <laughs> you know. Yeah. Definitely makes sense. Oh, forward air down smash? Oh, what? Yeah, I'm bad. I don't know. <laughs> I know. You did the perfect forward air, and then they did the perfect DI to get destroyed. Just down smash. Yep, definitely right. Definitely, definitely right. What yeah. do I even do? Did I try to run off? Try to run off. Yeah. And do something. I don't know what. But... Yep. I just was not ready for what would happen, definitely. I think this is great. Like, not lasering. And then you just play it normally, you know? Mm-hmm. That downer probably wasn't great, but... Yeah, I mean, if you shielded, you probably would have just died. Yeah. Nice. This is great. Nice. Ah, the invincibility is just rough. I... I'm not super confident in giving invincibility advice. I know how it works, but I am still struggling to like figure out how to avoid this stuff with Falco. Oh yeah, Fal. Okay, versus Sheik and versus Fox. I guess we're not talking about Sheik, but like that's just I have I struggle so much with keeping my leads in like those matchups. Mm-hmm. Um, that's like probably the biggest way I lose my stocks. I feel like versus Fox is Fox has invincibility, and I either have to make a choice between like going to side platform and trying to light shield, which I think some people might just be better at than me, but I feel like, you know, there's still ways for me to get hit for doing that. Yeah. Um, I feel like I see Mango all the time just moving away, and he just does, like, what yeah. looks to me like just this magic movement pattern, he just doesn't get hit. And I'm like, I don't understand what yeah. he's seeing. That I'm I, was, not. I, I guess he's just checking for more stuff than I am, but I, I think don't, so. I don't know. I asked him yeah. too. And he can't, like, put it in, like, he can put it into his words, but, like, I have to kind of extract the information to make it <laughs> make sense to me. So, like, you do, like, I can see Mango doing this, but I think after this, I don't think Mango shields. I think Mango keeps his dash, or keeps his Mm -hmm. movement, and maybe he dashes right here and does a backflip full hop up here, and now it's in the view assist of what's going to happen. Okay, so wait, just to break that down a little more, just so I understand, so, like, the wave dash, during the wave dash, I could have reacted, I should have been like, okay, Fox is full hopping here, Mm -hmm. that means I don't have to shield, because... Fox is up there, yep. and then I can dash back, and he'll have to land, and then yep. I can full hop to yep. escape the landing. Yeah. Okay. And then on your descent, he shouldn't be invincible anymore. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you kind of get what I see, where what I mean, where like Fox gets two guesses. He guessed here. He guessed here. Now he's like able to get out of the situation because he's just so fast. Yeah. Yeah. Fox can't do all that. Because yeah. Fox gets to cover space with his full hop for one guess, and then cover more space with a short hop for another guess. We get one guess if we do our full hop. That's it. Because our full hop goes mm-hmm. so high. Like we, we don't have time. And it's like, we only get really one guess for our short hop, because our short hop is also slower. We're slower. So like we don't have as much time as Fox does when it comes to his ability. Okay. So just one guess, then try to position. That's just a good way to think that about it. That's what I would suggest as Falco. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and the ending's stupid here. Okay, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunate, yeah. I didn't, I didn't, honestly, I didn't think we'd even get to this part, but. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess, I guess that's about all the time I have, so that was, that was very, very helpful, though. I, I have to just get better at reacting to these positions, definitely, but. Yeah. Um, it's definitely helpful. Do you have any questions or anything? Um, I probably will for next time after I review the lesson 
um, when I watch them back because there's a lot of stuff that's kind of like new to me to think about. So mm -hmm. I don't have like a good question yet or anything. That's fine. Um, but I'm but I will. I'm sure I definitely will. I think I think it like asked a lot of good questions that I don't have the immediate answer for. So it'll be good to look it over. Okay. All right. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. Thank you. I, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. That yeah. Was very helpful. Cool. Um, and uh, yeah. Have a good weekend. All right. Yeah. You too. See ya.